we're here to review the PRISM camera system. So the PRISM camera system is available on the desktop as a shortcut. Uh, in the start menu, it is pinned to the start menu. Everyone will be assigned their own login uh, from your supervisor, I guess. I will use mine for demonstration purposes, if I can spell it right. So, when it opens, it will be blank. Let's get over so I can see. As you scroll down through the list of cameras, hovering over them gives you a thumbnail of each one. Simply grab a camera, drag it, and drop it. Fairly straightforward, you can clear it, right click it, and you can clear them. Start over again. Moving to the side, the top, or the bottom will give you menus. The top, let's start here, I can do different layouts. Sixteen. I, I would never recommend going to a sixty-four. <laughs> it's likely the computer won't like it and will experience problems at some point. A couple different views available and, and you can populate these just like the other ones. Moving to the left, you'll the camera menu will pop up and you can grab cameras and drag and drop them over. forward to populate. You can pull it up full screen by clicking on it. On the top you'll get the uh, the menu bar if you will at the top of the, the picture. Double click it and it will break it out to go full screen. And you'll notice along the bottom are the other cameras that you've um, dragged into your view. So you could switch between the cameras that you have selected. Um, or you can go back to your multi view by same thing. Go back to the top and just double click the top of the picture the title bar and you'll go back to your multi-view. So, click the top, you get a title bar, double click it, and it goes back. And we can drag and there, any cameras that we want into it. Again, I wouldn't go... 16 is probably the safest place to go for most. I'm just grabbing random cameras. The user will have the ability to set up views. If there's, you know, we, we spoke about uh, setting up and, and renaming cameras and so they group together a little more conveniently. Um, that's something that we'll work on in the future going forward. So by the time anybody's operating it, it should be easier, I would think, uh, as far as finding a, a particular camera. Uh, sliding to the bottom gives you a time bar. You can grab the time bar and just drag it back and you're going back as far as you need to in time. And you're watching, you know, this is only back a few minutes. There's a, uh, on, on this time bar, there's a, a plus and minus here on the, on the right side to help stretch out that time bar or shrink it down so if I want to go back you know uh, minutes or hours or days then I can it helps me jump bigger bigger times by days by hours yeah those ones still had OSD on that's at night you can sling it over to the right and you're back to live And it's indicated by the live at the top corner of the screen. When you are browsing backwards, it will say recorded in the corner of the screen. And again, once you're you can once you're done sliding back, looking at whatever's going on, you can take and just drag it back over and it'll go back to live or simply clear it. And then Of 
this one's not populated now. So that's basic function of live view and, and recorded. Um, I don't know how much further we want to go into it at this point. What more do we want to do functionally with super, you know, as far as supervisors go? Okay, uh, this is for saving and exporting video. Um, you can record lo record video while you're watching it live. If you see something happening, like, hey, these guys look like they're doing something and I want to record it. Or you can do it when you're on playback. Well, of course, there's going to be nobody there when I go scroll back, right? Okay, here's somebody here. These guys look suspicious. Slide over to the left side of the screen and you get a start recording. So while you're playing back or, or, or viewing it live, it'll say that it's recording. as things happen. Let it run as long as you want to let it run. And then stop recording. And it'll tell you that it successfully saved it to the uh, evidence locker, they call it, which is available on the icon. If I can see that high. Where'd it go? Which one was it? I can't see. Without blocking. Time video, right there. Oh, right. Evidence locker, right, oh, right there, I'm on it. Evidence locker is a little padlock. This is where all your events will go. Uh, the pieces of video that you save and try to archive. So you can go here and view them. It's case files, as they like to call it. You can take, you can take this and export it, save it icons over here to do, get rid of them, move them, export them to local disk and then save them off onto USB or, or whatever you want, CD, whatever you want to do with them. And then you can dispose of them once they're no longer needed to save local space because it is recording it locally. So the, the more files that you, that you save, you're saving them locally to the workstation, not to the system. And then go back to live. and you're back to live.